If you haven't had a look at the HPC recipe library yet, well, today we'll explore how you can use it to deploy an AWS parallel cluster or two with several bells and whistles. Welcome to HPC Tech Shorts Kitchen. I'm Chef Buff, and today in the style of nerds everywhere who can't cook, we're going to learn how to put boxed HPC meals from the grocery store into the CloudFormation microwave oven. But unlike TV dinners, these things are going to taste and perform like the best souffle or Sunday roast you've ever eaten. The HPC Recipe Library is a repo on GitHub that has a ton of interoperable building blocks for deploying HPC elements into your AWS account. This is infrastructure as code at its best, because 50 lines of text shared with the world can specify some pretty complex things, like, for example, an entire HPC cluster with Lustre, Math Libraries, a scheduler, a range of MPIs to match your bathroom decor. The recipe library exists because we wanted to share different things we've cooked previously for solving other customers' problems. But like all recipe libraries, the best ones have lots of dishes, so you can choose one that looks like a good fit for the people dining at your R&D lab. More likely, you'll find something that's close to what you need, and you can build it, test it, and trash it. And then you can modify the script that created it and spin up a new one that's exactly what you need, or close to it. If you can iterate like this with on-premises clusters, you're probably Tony Stark, and well, we don't have much to offer you. Though, we could do with getting the recipe for that energy source thing in your chest. Now, all of these recipes take inputs at launch time. Think of these as the command line options to the recipe, and they emit outputs, values that are either meaningful to you or can be connected to other recipes later to be used as their inputs. And when I said before that recipes in the library are interoperable, what I meant was that we've written all these recipes so the outputs from each can be used as the inputs to others without modification. They're plug compatible. So you can use one of the two recipes from the net folder to create the network infrastructure you need for building your clusters and storage systems in. Among other things, HPC clusters can't run without IP numbers and network rules to route traffic, so you need to spec the network configuration right, or stuff won't work later and you'll go mad trying to debug it. These recipes hide all that mess in a convenient script. So later on, when you want to spin up, say, a Lustre file system, you can choose the VPC and subnets from your network stack, and you'll know for sure you're building everything in a consistent way in a consistent place. This is a serious time saver, and it's incredible for being able to build extremely reproducible infrastructure. It also means that when you're building Lustre, you're only worrying about how big and how fast you want it to be, which is the right way to be thinking. And when CloudFormation is done building a Lustre file system for you, it spits out a file system ID in its output tab, and then you can use that later as an input to a parallel cluster recipe. You get the idea, hopefully, by now. It's honestly like cooking a banquet one dish at a time, knowing that the chef who put all of the recipes together in the banquet book chose dishes with a common theme like low sodium or designed to go well with a nice dry white. Let's look at some of the P-Cluster recipes because there's quite a few variations. Lots of these are one-click launch stacks, which expect networking and storage to be provided. Some only expect networking, and some of them expect nothing at all. In most cases, the ones with this big launch stack button are a one-click easy button recipes that you can use to try and flex test something, like our HPC instances. Incidentally, if you don't know about those, check out this video. Now, these recipes are built for you to jump in quickly and figure out if our latest instances, based on AMD, Intel, or AWS Gravitons, are the right thing for you. They build very complete clusters in standalone VPCs. They each come with an NFS volume shared from the head node for slash home and a scratch file system that uses Lustre mounted at slash scratch. The HPC instances themselves are neat because they're super fast and, if I may say so, rather cheap. Pennies per core hour for on demand for no commitment. You'd be irresponsible not to try them out, but now I'm sounding like your mother. Some other one-click recipes are there, so you can try out some important features. Let's say you're evaluating whether Slurm's accounting feature will do what you need to strap quotas around your users and put limits on the job queue so the chemists in your lab don't go crazy inventing too many weird drugs on the weekends. By the way, it's always the chemists. Well, Parallel Cluster knows how to support Slurm Accounting, but Slurm Accounting needs a SQL database to store its accounting records in, and who's got time to learn about building databases when you just want to try this thing out? So the Slurm Accounting stack has a nice shiny one-click button you can bang on, which asks you a very small number of questions, most of which you can ignore. The one you can't ignore is that you need to choose an admin password for the accounting database. Be imaginative, but no hashes, slashes, quotes, or ats or you'll be spending your time debugging instead of learning about Slurm accounting. 
Now, if Slurm accounting turns out to be your thing, you can download the CloudFormation templates and start to tweak and tinker with contents to make them your own. And we'll show you how to do that in another video, I promise. Now, we'd be remiss if we didn't show you how to get into the clusters when they come up. Now, I launched the Try HPC 7G cluster yesterday and called my cluster my right arm. Why? Well, because it's ARM-based processor, right? I just head into my CloudFormation console like this. I find the top level stack and I peep in the outputs tab. And right there at the top is what I need. I've got two options to log into the head node. You can click on that system manager URL link just there. And through the magic of some web stuff, you'll get a browser tab open with a shell in it and a blinking cursor. If you think this feels too fancy and you'd prefer to use your shell, then grab this IP number here and SSH in like this. We log in as EC2 user. That's a bit of an Amazon thing. It's the default user we provide in all our Amazon Linux machine images. We had to pick one and you'll be glad to know we didn't choose Mr. Mixtixelplix, which has pretty much the same number of characters, but is a pain in the butt to remember. If you need a multi-user cluster because you're planning to keep your cluster running long term and you need other people to authenticate into it in the usual way, then you'll want to look at this other stack which deploys a multi-user configuration of parallel cluster. This is another one-click stack that creates the cluster, but as always, notice the comments that we've left that help you figure out how to fill in the form fields. This one needs you to provide a username and password for an initial user that we will create for you in the Active Directory server when it comes up. The recipe uses a Microsoft Active Directory because we're guessing you've probably already got one of those on your site already. And once you finish kicking the tires of this feature, you'll want to connect to that one instead. Now, this recipe is batteries included. So you get a brand new Microsoft Active Directory along with a full cluster so you can experiment with the features. There's no fancy high performance storage because we figured that the speed your jobs run at isn't really material at this point while you're just evaluating the multi-user thing. Once you've done fiddling with this or any of the other recipes, you can crash the whole thing by looking at the top level stack you created and deleting it. If you were using stacks like this for production, something that we think is a very good idea by the way, then clearly you'll want to make sure that old Butterfingers doesn't accidentally slip and click delete on the wrong stack. That's why we have termination protection, which you can enable on your very valuable stacks. So it gives you a moment of pause to prevent you from shooting yourself in the foot or both feet in fact. The one-click recipes are a way of getting somewhere fast. But the last thing I want to show you today is that if you peep inside, they're actually assembled from other recipes, in fact, other stacks. In CloudFormation's terms, it's called a nested stack. We'll show you how to tinker with this in another video. Now, that's probably enough for today. Go and check out the blog post which explains all of this in a lot more detail, but don't dwell there for too long. Go check out the actual recipe repo on GitHub and get busy nosing around inside the readme and YAML files and see what can be done with a small amount of work. Keep an eye out for more videos in this series because we'll be explaining how to take these recipes that we built and mess with their innards so that they become your recipes describing your environments that you need to have around when you do HPC. We'll see you in the cloud.